Hey everyone, Gatherer here. I'm um, just going to do as quick a video as I can on officers and where to start and which ones are the most important ones to have and which skills are the best to have at the level most of us are at. Our main focus really until we get past C30 at least, is going to be on long range attack because that's going to give us the um, best advantage in most of the events, especially when we're working as a team. If everybody is using the same formation, long range attack is going to give us the best overall boost. So you can see the six officers I have enabled at the moment in the warfare section are probably the most useful certainly for now and um, the biggest ones to give you long range attack is going to be Tifa if you look at her skills the first skill you get with her at one star is advanced kill and that gives you attack boost on everything long range attack mid range attack and melee attack and every time you level her up that one is going to go up so that's going to give you a good boost and in an ideal world the first three you want to have on Tifa is um, a long range attack and a long range expert um, I finally do have long range attack and a long range expert on her at three stars which means every time I do something to her whether it be add some skills or um, level her up or add another star that's going to give me the maximum increase in my long range attack and the priority order if you can get them it all depends on where your skills fall it's all down to luck of the draw would be to go for the long range attack first because you can see while well, we've got long range expert open that gives you a smaller boost in attack but also gives you a boost on hp the boost is the same on, on both, but if you look at the percentages, I mean, I've got mine, at, this one's only at level 7 because I've been boosting the long-range attack on its own, but at an equal level, the boost you get on the attack from the expert is going to be less than you get from just long-range attack on its own. And that goes for your main attack officers, like Zeus is the next one. You want to have long range expert and long range attack on him as well. And his main skill is slightly different, but he is one of the most important ones in the game. And he's even rarer than Tifa to get. So you find he'll be the hardest to level up without spending money. His main skill is it increases the damage that is dealt to all troops. So that's quite big, really. Um, so anytime you're... Attack is more than a player's troop defence. That creates damage. And Zeus increases that damage. So he helps you kill people off quicker. And that's damage to all troops. So it doesn't matter which of your troops are doing the damage. He will increase the damage that you do. Um, so he's another one that you put your long range attack skills on as well. And then all combined that's going to give the overall best effect. And the third one that you prioritise for long-range attack is Panda. Now, Panda's main skill is Siege Attack, and that means that his skill only works when you're attacking another city. It doesn't work if you're defending. Uh, there is one that's the opposite way round, and we'll, we'll see him in a minute, but he's less useful. Um, and that, again, his main boost will boost... All the different types of fleets so it will be your long range your mid range and your melee fleets that will get that attack and a hp boost from him hp is more important on your front row and your shredders because they start with way more hp than anything else so a percentage increase on them will be more effective on their hp than it will be on their attack 
and long range, vice versa. They start with a lower HP, so it's better to focus on their attack because that's higher. So your boost will be higher if you go that way. And um, I do have a long range expert on Panda, um, but I haven't got enough long range attacks to have one on Panda. Um, I put one on somebody else. But the next one I get will be going on him. And you can see I've put a skill on him anyway. And I've left it at level 1. So that um, when I get the right skill I can take that off. And it won't cost me any skill books. And that skill will still be there for me to use in the future. When the time comes. So those first three. Panda, Zeus and Tifa. Are the ones you want to concentrate your long range attack skills on when you get them. You're not going to get them all at once, so you're going to have to use placeholder skills. It's worth putting them in. Look, this one at level 1, because Panda's got a few stars and he's been leveled up, it still gives me an 8.5% boost on the HP on my long-range troops there. I um, am probably going to swap that out for a um, melee HP skill for setting my fleet for DoD. I put this in ages ago before... Started using a lot of melee troops and realising the importance of them. And then the other one is Stormboat. Stormboat can go either way. I mean, really, we're going to be long-range attack focused as an alliance for a long time. So you probably want to go long-range attack on him. There are The other two are better for your um, melee because their base skill is um, specifically melee-based. His base skill does improve your defence and HP on all troops. And I have got a long range attack on him. Um, again, I put it on him early and had levelled it up before I had spaces on Panda and realised it would have probably been better going on Panda at the beginning. But it's no harm having it on Stormbow because in the end I will want to have long range attack on him and long range expert on him as well as having it on the first three I mentioned. And the other one I've got on him is long range defence. And I can't remember why I levelled that up. I probably shouldn't have done, but I didn't level it up far, so it's not going to lose me much when I take that off. And then we go to Aeon. Aeon is another good one. She's really going to buff up your um, front row. You can see her um, base skill is all melee based and it gives you a boost in every department on your melee troops. So she is really key to have in there at all times and to level up because as we've seen through DOD, melee is important, especially in anything where you're battling on your own without the assistance of your um, teammates, you need to have a strong front row. So getting a boost on the front row is important. And with that, in mind because there are going to be the odd times that you swap troops out depending on what you're doing um, she's not as important when we're doing ta missions because we don't send any front row very often if we're doing a big big attack and we're going to be sending some front row it might be worth putting her in but even still we don't send that many as a group so you're probably better off putting butterfly back in which we'll cover in a minute for that unless of course you're starting to go mid-range and I've got a mid-range skill on her. Mid-range attack level one. So I'm still not sure where I'm going to go with that. But I've also got a melee HP skill on her as well. Um, which I'm going to start levelling up because that's going to give me more of a boost. Because I'm quite high on long range attack anyway at the moment. So you really want Aeon, you want to have melee or maybe mid-range skills on. And then the other one that's important, especially in loss events, is Alexandria, another rare one to get. And her main skill is reducing the amount of damage you take from every single troop type that attacks you. So that means you're going to lose less troops the higher you've got this leveled up. Which, obviously, in the events where you actually really do lose troops, that's going to save you having to recruit more troops and your army will stay stronger for longer. And on her, I've got another melee HP. Remember, on melee, the HP is going to be the priority. So just put the HP skills on their own on her rather than the expert. If you've only got an expert, then put it on. 
uh, but the HP ones will be better to improve your stopping power. And then I've got another mid-range attack on her as well um, because I have started using launchers in some attacks so um, it's good to have some extra boost in that when you get to that point. But until you can fill your fleet with um, long-range troops, you don't really want to be messing about with the mid-range ones too often. It'll be more beneficial to you to recruit a full fleet of snipers or um, cannons, depending on what level you're at. And then when you get to around C26, you'll probably be at the point, if you haven't lost too many in kill events, that you can start messing around with your formations and um, looking at the mid-range options and boosting your melee as well. So that's the six main ones covered. Kingsley is one that you will get stars pretty quickly on because they're given away in a lot of events. But his main skill is pretty useless. All the other six have a good set of skills. His skill only gives you increased attack and HP on defence. Now, if you're the type of player who is able to remember to change troops every single time for every single benefit, then when you're sitting in your city without a shield and you think you might be attacked, then swapping him in instead of Panda will give you a good boost. But then if you've got leveled up other skills on Panda, Panda still might be better. So it's really a case of looking at your stats when you do that. And this stat, the City Guards attack stat, and the Siege Army attack that Panda have do not show up in your stats in the stats section. So if you're comparing, swapping um, officers in and out and looking at your stats to see what difference it makes. And it is worth doing that so you get an idea of who does what and what difference it makes to all your um, boosts. These two guys, it doesn't show up in that. It only shows up in the stats when you look at a battle report, when you go below where it shows you how many um, troops you've lost. If you just keep scrolling down, it will show you your stats that were active in that particular attack. I pretty much never, ever use Kingsley anymore. But early on, you may find that just putting level one skills on him because you've got three stars on him and only one or two stars on other people, you may find that your stats are better with Kingsley in. But don't waste money um or xp or skill books on leveling it up on him because you will quite quickly get to a point where your other officers will outweigh him massively and you'll um, never really use him i do try and save his fragments if i can but i will spend them if a better one comes up and i haven't got enough um zed coins uh, but if i do get him up enough that i've got enough fragments to level him up i will because his five star skill interests me um, because if you're attacking a big city and you um, have this skill on it's going to reduce the damage amount by 24.5 percent for 12 hours which seems quite good to me and you only have to really do it once i'm not sure i think you can actually just pick the city that's going to happen on as well so <coughs> and the other one in your warfare ones that it's worth using now and again and again where the way the game works you'll probably have her leveled up quite um quite high anyway because you get a lot of her early on is um butterfly and if we have a look at what she's given us um you can see if i put her in i'm going to get a seven percent attack increase on all my troop levels and I've just got some placeholder skills on her which gives some additional extras so she can be useful in the um, non-loss events it sometimes could be better to put her in instead of Alexandria if you haven't got Alexandria leveled up with some other skills on it once you start putting skills on purple officers the bonuses you get for leveling them up really outweigh the blue ones a lot the other time it's worth putting um a butterfly in is on the uh things we do where you're attacking monsters um so elite zombie doom irons grip and mother of doom if you swap out butterfly for alexandria you will get a higher score 
um, and all of those things give you better rewards the higher score you get. It's only going to make a small difference, but it will get you some extra rewards if you can remember to swap her in. And that's really it on your um, main officers to use. I will cover adding skills and stuff like that, leveling them up in another video. Otherwise, this video is just going to go on forever. So then your drill masters. The aim is to get all three purple ones there. And the only time you will change the drill masters over, and again, it's a small difference, is when you're attacking um, the, the monsters, the same reason as you'd put butterfly in. Catty's main skill only reduces the attack of enemy troops. And where this game mentions troops in skills and things, it usually means that it doesn't work on monsters. Um, the other one where this um, makes a difference is Medici as well, because you're mostly attacking monsters in there. Uh, whereas Layla's main skill uh, increases your troops' attack. Now, that's your troops' attack, so that skill will work even when you're battling monsters. And again, you'll probably have some um, stars on her from early in the game. Um, just don't put any um, XP on it. I put a little bit on at the beginning and the smaller amount of XP you have on something, the bigger percentage loss you take is because the minimum it's going to take off you is a 500 XP block. So I've only got about 1500 XP on her and if I take it off, I'll lose 500 XP out of that 1500. So at this point, uh, 1000 XP is not going to make much difference to anything else. So I've just left it on and... Uh, Give me a few more points when I'm battling monsters. I forget to change them sometimes, but it is worth changing out. Layla for Catty and Butterfly for Alexandria when you're um, attacking monsters. Some of you might not have all the purples in Warfare, so Butterfly is going to be in there anyway, so it won't make any difference. Uh, all their other skills, when you go through... Starring them up are the same. They'll all give you an increased um, amount of hospital limit when you get to star two. And sorry, it's the same on the purples as it is on the blues, except the reward is much better on the purples. They will all give you... Um, actually, Simon gives you mid-range uh, weaken, whereas Maria gives you melee killer, which is the same as Kate. It's the first time I've noticed that one, but it's only a slight difference. Simon really is the hardest one to get as well. As you can see, I've got Kate up to three, Simon's at two, Maria only came out recently and I've still got her up to two already anyway, and I haven't spent loads of money on these guys. I did just buy a Simon pack because I was getting to the point where buying the cheapest pack was gonna give me the option to star him up. Um, and I'll do that um, when there's a reward for starring him up. The drill masters are really important, and um, as soon as you can get the um, three of them, the better. And if you're going to spend money on them, then spend the money early to get that um, extra increase in your wounded capacity. Because once you get that, you have less need for Braveheart until your um, fleet limit gets really big. So your strategy officers, there's gonna be four that you aim for and one that you keep in this. The two obvious ones are Saki and Morgan because they increase your fleet size. And if you weren't aware, Saki's skill gets even bigger in cross nation events, which is anything where we're battling other nations. So. Um, elite Wars, Duel of Dominance, Triangle War, Frenzy, and all that kind of thing, you'll notice you get a bigger fleet in those than you do when playing just in our world. And that's because of um, Saki's skill. So there, you're going to have them in most of the time when you're attacking, because if you've got enough troops to fill a bigger fleet, that's going to give you the um, biggest all-round bonus by filling your fleet up with the right troops. The other ones to have in, and um, you're going to swap them out when necessary. Loreline is um, the one that increases your recruiting speed. And because you want your um, 
recruiting places working 24 hours any time you can save on that is worth having she saves me um, well over an hour on most things so that certainly adds up um, over the course of time and the blue one to keep for the same reason is Barney because his main skill is recruitment speed as well obviously you can see the difference between him at 5% and you've got Loreline there at 17.2% and there's only one star difference between them so you can see the difference that the purples do make but when just before you hit recruit it's worth putting in both of those instead of Morgan and Saki do hit the recruit button and then come back and swap them out and with recruiting it's some it's mostly worth adjusting the amount of troops that you recruit so that all the recruits finish at the same time and then you only have to swap your troops out once a day when you um, recruit everybody at the same time the um, draft skill the further you get into the game you might think about taking that off because at the moment it's um, taken me one day and eight hours to recruit one batch one full batch of people in the workshop and one day and three hours to do um, people in the uh, camp and the workshop uh, camp and the uh, factory so at some point I am probably going to take this um, skill off which is why I haven't leveled it up because you really want to be able to have a recruitment finish every single day because that helps you do your daily quests and there's no cost in that as long as it doesn't affect your recruitment speed you'll still have the same amount of troops if you reduce the number of troops you recruit in a batch as long as you um, remember to rec start recruiting again as soon as they're finished. And the other one in strategy is Brave Star. You will find there'll be points in the game where he's useful. And then as you grow your wounded limit through other ways, you might not use him for ages. And then you'll hit a point where you do need to put him in. Obviously, he when leveled up, his main skill increases your max wounded and you can see he gives me a 22% increase um, but at the moment if I go to my hospital here click details you can see my wounded limit is over 200,000 26,000 plus 187 so that's 213,000 I know some guys have got even more than that because they've been better at um, building medic stations than me but even with my fleet it's rare that I get over 200,000 troops in my fleet so there's no real point in putting Brave Star in um, but I am getting to the point where when I'm using maximum fleet expansions I can get over that and that's a risk if you end up in a big battle and you could end up losing a lot of troops so at that point I would um, reduce my fleet size and put Brave Star in and make sure that when I'm going into battle or I have troops sitting in my city when it's um, when it's an actual loss event that he's in so that um, we don't lose any troops by filling up our hospital. So that's the main officers. There is a, obviously the um, strategy officers to go through as well. Um, I'm not the best at remembering to change troops out. I can tell everybody that you should do it, but I forget. So um, I tend to leave um, the two Medici brothers in all the time and I've got um, good um, gathering skills on these guys and I've got them all set to steel and minerals because that's pretty much all I gather with this account. If I need anything else, I get my farms to do it. Same with um, the fat Medici got minerals and steel on in fact both minerals on him um if you're doing a big construction you'll have ginger starred up because the quests early on get you to do it her main skill is um engineering which is, he helps her in construction speed so if you're doing a city hall or a um city wall 
it's definitely worth remembering to put her in instead of the Fat Medici just while you hit the um, build button um, because you'll get the benefit and then um, once you've hit that button you can switch your gathering person back in and the um, gathering buffs only take effect if they're enabled when you start gathering and I Doc Gray early on when you're doing research put him in before you start the research it will reduce the amount of time it takes to do it I've temporarily suspended research because it's starting to take a huge amount of resource for very limited return I've got all the um, all the long range attack research done and as much of the um, increase the wounded done which are the most important ones for them for me at the moment I will go back and finish up at some point once I'm past city level 30 because it's going to take a long long time to get to 34 so bring everything up to level when I get there and then um, plod along to level level 34 so that's it for now I'll um, do another video on officers that goes through um, upgrading the um, skills and XP in more detail but the main thing is when you're doing your upgrades so I've got some XP to use and I know I'm going to put it on Tifa because I've already done it but what you do you don't you can use the sliders and see what increase it's given you in all the areas and then go and have a look at somebody else who you've got leveled up quite high and see what they're going to give you and before you commit to it just work out which one is giving you the most increase because the usual things in this game is it costs you more per level to increase something so what i mean is at the moment it's going to cost me 50,000 to get tifa up one xp level and you go 50,000 and i go up and I get that amount, the 0.4 all troops attack, I get a nearly 0.4 long range attack, and I get 0.12 on the um, long range expert just by adding some XP. But if I go back to Stormbow, who's level 26, he's only going to cost me 37,000 XP to move up a level. So what you need to do is sort of add up what you're getting and then divide it by how much XP you're using and you'll work out which is the best value increase to use. Um, but I'm going to put this on Tifa because I've got plenty. And that will increase my long range attack a bit more. And it works the same with skill books. So if you're going to um, increase someone's skill, you can see the next level in long range attack that I'm going to get from Tifa is, um, is 3,100, which is 62 skill books. And it's going to give me nearly a percent in long range attack. And if I go to Stormbow, who's got the um, long range attack skill it's going to cost me 2600 to upgrade him and if I go up with him it's going to give me almost the same amount of long range attack as putting it on Tifa so then again you'd um, get the calculator out if you really want to sometimes it's pretty obvious here it's not really going to make much difference I would probably put it on um, the storm bow because then that leaves me more skill books to use on um, somebody else to bring something else up um, so they're both nearly one percent increase in the long range attack but it is worth just checking when you're doing this to see if somebody else will give you a better increase or the same increase for using less skill books and again concentrate as much on long range attack don't level up skills other than long range attack early on in the game and by early on I mean if you're less than a city 26 you really want to be using all your skill books for long range attack before you start putting them everywhere else and the same with other XP um, 
at some point it always gets to the point where the game gives you less so you can see most of my officers here are at um, the lowest I've got is level 18 and I'll probably bring those two up to level 20 because it costs so little XP compared to anybody else so 20,000 on Aeon to go up another level whereas as we've seen before Tifa now is 53,000 to go up a level so I can almost go up two and a half levels on Aeon for the same price it's given me a, a different increase but I am at the point now where I want to be increasing my melee and mid-range more so there we go hope that helps any questions just message me I'll always answer if I'm on and um, if I don't answer straight away it just means I'm I'm not about or I'm busy killing something, but I will get back to you.